What is up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Ryan Myers Expeditions. Today we're way up here on the north side of the island. We got a small weather window. It's it's okay out there. I got Samogram today. She is not happy because it is currently 6 a.m. We came up here for a sunrise mission. This is gonna be sick. We're just me and Sam out here chilling, diving, looking for some food, looking for dinner tonight, getting some food for the weekend. This should be cool. No pressure, no worries in the world. We're just gonna go out here and have some fun and see what happens. All right guys, we're all suited up and we'll see you in the water. What'd you find? I found my first like giant cowrie. That's a giant, almost perfect one. Yeah. Wow. It's even different, it's got like a different color, different pattern on it, doesn't it? Yep. Sweet. Recently it seemed like everywhere I was diving there were a lot of ukus. Now, just because I was seeing them does not mean I was shooting them and today was no different. This first dive of the day, this guy came right in and just would not commit, could not get a shot off. Second dive, same thing, another spot nearby, ukus coming over, no shot. I did everything I could, I was doing my grunts, I was doing my dusting. I didn't have the big gun today and I think that might have been kind of some of my problem that I tend to take a little bit longer shots if I have that bigger gun. I think another one of my problems too was that I wasn't really in Uku mode. And without that big gun, it just, I'm not looking for them and therefore I'm not hunting properly to get them. You can get all of the goats, all of the, you know, small typical reef fish by doing kind of a subpar hunting technique. But for those Uku, so often out here, you've gotta hide and that's 100%. Like you can't just be out here in the sand like this. You have to do it properly. And I think that was part of my problem today, that ukus were just all around and I wasn't really in uku mode. I didn't have the big gun. You can see I'm just kind of out here chilling in the sand. I'm still, I'm on the bottom. I'm staying down there a long time. But what's really required for these fish sometimes is that extra level, that extra hiding. And you can see that ledge across there. And that's where I really should have been. I should have been tucked up in that ledge, hidden, and waiting for those fish to kind of come over to me. You can see the uku right there. He's around, he's curious, but he's still being just a little bit too cautious to get into range of this 100 centimeter roller. You can see he's thinking about it over and over. He wants to come in, but he's cautious, and he's smart, and he knows better. And this is when those real skills come out, when you need to learn how to do that extra step to get those fish and get close enough to them to get the shot on these really cool trophy fish out here in Hawaii. So the next dive here, this is exactly what I did. You can see that ledge there, and before I was out to the right in the sand, kind of in no man's land. This time I see that shadow there, I know that I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna tuck myself up in there as much as I can, and guys, think back to that last dive. Think about how long I was on the bottom with nothing coming in. I mean, he was attracted, but he wouldn't commit. He never got close enough to get the shot. Whereas this dive, I go down and I do everything textbook. I'm down there, I'm hidden, I'm hiding up against the ledge, and I'm gonna sit there and I'm gonna track those fish over. You can see the uku coming in, and you can also see that red veke that's with him. He got a little bit smart with just that little bit of gun movement and decided to turn and go off, but the uku came right in and gave me exactly the shot that I was looking for. What else is really cool about this dive is I had multiple opportunities on this same fish before. I could have taken a shot, I could have tried, I could have taken one of those long shots, but if you wait and you take your time and you don't scare that fish away, you'll have another opportunity like this to find a better hiding spot and do it properly and then get exactly the shot that you're looking for. So this next dive here is really, really cool because if you look right here, you can actually see the Moana Kali. And this happens to me a lot. I see the Moana Kali from the surface, he's feeding, and I wanna dive, but I wanna dive so slowly to not scare him. And it's so tempting just to dive down and shoot the fish, but I promise you that just doesn't work as often as this does. Go down as quietly as you can, as slowly as you can, post up, do everything slowly, and a lot of times that fish will stay put or just like this come right over to you and present the shot that you're looking for. It takes a lot of self-control to go down there and not take the shot on that fish, to wait until it presents you with the shot that you're looking for, but with doing this enough times, you know that you have a much better chance of landing that fish by hunting it that way. 
So I had seen this uku cruising around in this whole pot of fish from the surface. So that means I know I've got to take the extra time to find the hiding, hiding spot that I'm looking for. And that's exactly what I've got here. I've got kind of like a sandy wedge right between two big boulders and I'm looking out at the fish pile. There's the uku there. He's kind of cruising in and out. And honestly, this was my shot right here. I should have taken that shot, but like I'm always saying, I like to be patient. I like to wait until I kind of get that 100% shot because a lot of times he'll come back around. He'll give me another shot. But recently I've been kind of really discovering with these ukus is that first pass seems to be the closest one. He'll give you some more after that, but none of them seem to be as close as that first pass. And I'm still learning out here, guys. I'm still learning these ukus and I do not get them every time. I mean, I come out and I really try. I mean, they're definitely one of my most targeted fish out here. And I learn every single time I go. This one just was not happening, but without shooting it, I'm gonna back out real quietly and try again. You can see from the surface this is a great clip of exactly where I'm laying. I'm between those two big boulders in that sand pit, looking out at the fish pile with a clear shooting lane. I try again with another dive down to the bottom in that same exact spot, that same hiding spot. I'm gonna try and dust quite a bit here and see if I can get that uku just to commit, to come in again one more time with that close pass that he did the first time and see if I can make it happen. You can see him out there, he's kind of cruising in back and forth, but he never gives me a shot like he did the first time. And had I had that 120 roller in my hand, I guarantee I would have taken that shot, but I just like to be a little bit closer with this 100 centimeter single roller. It just doesn't have the same range and I like to be close to my fish. What's really cool about the proper ukru and mu hunting technique is everything else comes over to you too. You can see like in that last dive, there were all those Moana Kali's. I'm sure some of you guys were crying, shoot the fish, shoot the Moana Kali's. And same thing here. When you hunt properly, you have opportunities. And you can see like these big stud Joes just chilling. Nobody's worried about me at all. They're just cruising around. They're a little curious and I'm able to wait and get that stone shot that I'm looking for. This was another beautiful little pocket that I found. And I keep trying to explain this to Sam over and over. I'm like, where you should hide? How do you know where to dive? Well, the big piles of fish like this are obvious, but you need a clear shooting lane. And what's best is to kind of be between two boulders, between two reefs, and kind of hide, and then wait and see what moves around in that pile and what gives you the best shot. You can see there's a couple Joes in there, and then this big uhu comes through, and I hadn't taken one of these in a while, so I had the opportunity, and I got an awesome shot on it right here. Now, I am not a taco master at all. Like, I do not grab them very often. I think they're pretty cool, but I ate one the other day that somebody cooked, and it was freaking incredible, and I kind of promised myself that the next one I saw, I'm gonna try and take. So, I'm new at this, so forgive this technique, but I'm here, I'm poking him, I get him to come out of the hole, I get a hold of him, and then there were actually a couple Moana Collies down there, and I had my gun, and I really kind of wanted to wait and see and decide, like, maybe I'll shoot one of these Moana Collies too, maybe I'll double up on this dive. And I kind of decided they were just a little bit small, and then I dropped my taco. Luckily, I was able to get after him, get him by the tentacle there, and keep a hold of him. Then I was kind of like, well, the dive's over now, I'm gonna go back, grab my gun, and head on up and now I've gotta kill this thing. And this was a struggle, guys. I've seen Justin do this so many times, he makes it look so easy, and I just do not have it yet. Taco? You guys have heard me say multiple times, especially in this video, to be patient down there on the bottom. Wait till you get that perfect shot you're looking for. However, it does not always work. Sometimes you get the fish that you're looking for to come right into your face, and then you don't take the exact shot, and you lose that opportunity forever. You can see the Moana Collies, that tiny little gun movement there so was enough to spook them and send them on their way, and they were not coming back towards me and I was pulling my hair out, but honestly, we had plenty of fish for the day. So it was pretty cool just to get to see another big pot of mature Moana Collies like that just out here on the reef. So I was actually heading in now, 
and I saw this uku from the surface. We had a bunch of fish, we're heading back to shore, and I kind of did this dive here on the edge of like where the boulders and this black sand, and I'm always looking for that transition point. I'm always looking for where the sand turns to rock, where the reef turns to sand, or the boulders turn to sand, or whatever it is, and that's where I'm hiding. And I, that's the best way to kind of blend in. And this fish came right in, suicidal oh, uku here, and I was able to put an awesome shot on it. You can see that shaft went all the way through it, but somehow here the flopper closed. But I actually found him a few minutes later laying on the bottom. He was dead, and I was able to get two ukus for the day. Hey there. How's it going? It's good. How are you? Good. All right, guys, we just got out of the water. We are in the absolute middle of nowhere, but of course, we bump into subscribers out here. Absolutely. What's up? What's up? Nice to see you. <laughs> hey, what's your name? It's Dave. Dave. Yep. And Dave's got a channel Ohana Sport Fishing. Ohana Sport Fishing. I'll throw the link down below. All right guys, so we're back here at the house again. I filleted all of those uku, those two beautiful ukus I got the other day. And what we're gonna do today is do something with this. So this is that uku skin. And I've heard of this done before. I've never actually done it myself, but I love chicharronas down in Mexico. And we're gonna attempt to recreate that here with fish skin, fish skin, chicharronas, crisps, chips, whatever you want to call them, but that's the plan. Okay, there's three major steps while we do this. First, we are going to boil the skins to tenderize it in some salty boiling water. The reason we have to boil it is because this still has a ton of meat and fat and bone. It's gonna help us remove all of this extra meat. So I'm drying it first. We stored it pretty poorly, so I'm just getting off all that fish slime. We're gonna heavily salt the water because the salt is gonna help tenderize the skin. It only needs about two minutes. So the skin now is really delicate. We're gonna take a butter knife and we're gonna gently scrape any meat and any fat off of the skin. Sam and Grandma's doing surgery over here. This is actually easier than I thought it would be, but it is kind of tedious. We've removed as much meat as I can. Now I'm just gonna rip them up into smaller shreds. I've got my oven preheated to 170, that's the lowest it'll go, so we can dry the skins. If you have a dehydrator, you can use that instead. And now I'm just gonna grease up my baking sheet. I'm using a little bit of leftover baking grease that we have. And we're gonna put the skins on with the skin side down. This better be delicious because it is a lot of work. That took forever, but we got every piece on our baking sheet and we are gonna throw it in the oven for a few hours. While our fish skin dries in the oven, we are gonna head over to the computer and we are gonna see who won our pole spear giveaway on our last video, How to Spearfish the Bahamas. So I've already scraped all of the comments and I've deleted any duplicates. So starting at number two with Ryan, obviously he's not gonna win this, but he would like to win it though. I would. So there were 1,029 entries, not including Ryan, obviously. So we're gonna start with value three and end with 1,029. And we're gonna pick a random number and see who won the Headhunter Roller Predator. Yeah. And we're gonna see who won the Headhunter Roller Predator. Da -da -da -da. Ah. Oh. 172. I can't say whatever that is. HY3. So we're gonna go over and we're gonna check and we're gonna see what you wrote and make sure that you subscribe to both Ryan's channel and Headhunter's channel. But congratulations, you are the winner of the Headhunter Full Spear Roller giveaway. We are flipping the skin and it is so much work. These better be the best tasting things I've ever had. Definitely use a dehydrator. What am I gonna do? I mean, the ones that works look good. Oh, it all worked. It's just stuck. Also, it smells terrible. Like rotten fish in like a harbor that's been sitting in the trash for days. That's what it smells like. Trying recipes so you guys don't have to. Somehow we managed to get them all scraped off. Now we're gonna arrange them again and then keep drying them for how long? Not much longer, just gotta do both sides. Point is get these guys nice and crispy before we fry them. Okay, everything 
everything in the oven seems like it's perfectly dried, so we're gonna put a little bit of oil in our pot here. I'd say that's more than a little bit. You want about an inch of oil. We're using vegetable oil. Any high smoke point oil works. Whoa. Whoa is right. It smells like fish. So we have no idea what's gonna happen, so we're gonna just try one. What, what the heck? I think it's done. Are you gonna try it? Yeah. Is it good? Oh my God. Sam, it's incredible. That was so much work, but we're gonna have to do this all the time now. How are we gonna be throwing fish skins away? I'm really excited to try this. And also I'm not excited that I have to do that all the time because it was a lot of work. It was a lot of work. Check these things out. I cannot believe how they came out. We were so skeptical the whole entire time. A lot of work, but I have no idea how we're gonna throw fish skin away from now on. I mean, that's two ukus worth of fish skin. Small ukus, but still, two ukus worth and not a lot of food. Freaking incredible. Just like chicharrones on the side of the road in Mexico. They have that same crunch, that same kind of crazy flavor. Oh, look at that, it looks so good. Mm. Ridiculous. I don't know what we're gonna do. What that are we gonna so do? so much work. Mm. I mean, uhu skin? I don't even know, like what, what kind of things can we, can we do this with, with Ono? Like, I have no idea. Mm. Oh no. Like, you guys have no idea how good this is. This is like on par with Chick-fil-A Uku, which we're actually gonna make next. I'm really excited. We're gonna make that tonight for dinner with the actual Uku. Oh, look at that puff. Oh. Mm, I don't wanna share it. Eat it, eat it. Guys, mm. this is insane. You guys have to try this. You definitely have to try this. A lot of work, but like I said, worth it. Really freaking cool. Wow, we're definitely doing this again. This is happening again. Well guys, thank you so, so much for watching. That was a really cool video. A really successful day of spearfishing. A really cool new recipe. Tag me on Instagram if you guys make these. I, I highly recommend it. We'll put the recipe down below. What else? Good to go? Congratulations to the winner of our last giveaway. And we will see you next time right here on Ryan Myers Expeditions.